Exploration like this, every move has a consequence. The most terrifying consequence of all is not having enough rope. If you underestimate the scale of Grand Canyon, you're trapped. Once you pull your ropes at the first rappel, there's no going back. The only option is to get to the river. This is my obsession, to find the last of the great unknown. I want to see wave riding documented the way I see it in my head and the way I feel it in the sea. It's a strange set of skills to begin to acquire, and it's only achievable through time spent riding waves. All sorts of waves on all sorts of crafts needs more time learning out in the water. Floating in the sea amongst lumps of swell, you'll always learn something. She'd been a lifelong, wise old classroom teacher of sorts, and hopefully, always will be. As a kid, I grew up chasing water around our family cattle ranch in central Colorado. I spent my summer mornings moving portable dams and linking pipes to gravity-fed sprinklers. I wondered how long it would take our irrigation water to reach the sea. So I decided to follow the river, source to sea, and find out. A friend once told me that this river is a western plumbing system nothing more. I nodded as if I understood. I didn't really understand what he meant at all until I marched 90 miles across this forgotten ancient landscape, this dry river cemetery. Antarctica, a frozen dead land. We don't belong here, but for a hundred years the brave and the foolish have been trying to conquer the ice. No one has ever walked from the edge of Antarctica to the South Pole and back under their own steam. This is the story of two friends who try. Our bodies are falling apart. This place, we're actually, we're dying out here at the moment. I just can't keep dealing with the pain on the trail. We're out here, we're alone, and it's bloody scary. 